Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my time series analysis tutorial. If you don't know, time series analysis is going to focus on analyzing data changes that occur at equally spaced time intervals so we can understand what factors produced past results and also so we can forecast future results. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so here I am in Jupyter Notebook. If I talk about anything that you haven't, like if you don't know how to set up a Jupyter Notebook, it's in the description. If I bring up a library you want to know more about, it's in the description. So everything is here you could ever want to know, but you don't need to watch all those videos to understand what's going on here. I'm going to explain everything as I go. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a library called NumPy. And I'm also going to get another library called Pandas. And both NumPy and Pandas are going to provide all sorts of tools for us to work with data. I'm also going to get Matplotlib. And it's going to allow us to create a whole bunch of different charts. This command right here is going to allow us to show our charts inside of our Jupyter Notebook. I'm also going to import another plotting library called Plotly. And if at any time I go a little bit too fast, just hit the pause button and type in what I have here. And I'll also put a link to everything I have here along with a ton of notes in the description on GitHub. And for now, I think that is all I'm gonna use library-wise. Another thing to know about is that time series analysis is going to be used for things like forecasting the stock market, economic outlook, and other numerous business and scientific based projects. So it does so much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about pandas date time indexes. So what we're going to do here is let's say I want to generate dates. I'm going to use pandas for this. And I want to start generating dates from 2020, October 01. And I'm going to say that I want 15 of these dates. And I'm going to say that I want this to increment days. And you can see that it went and created that for me. And this is a date time object that's 64 bits and it is accurate up to nanoseconds. And this is days, of course. You're also going to be able to come in here and type in a month date. So you can type in October or just simply oct01 and 2020. You're also going to be able to come in and pass in strings and have them converted into date times. And of course, you would just save these to a variable. So dates like this or whatever, if you want to reuse them. Just doing this to give you an overview. And of course, there's going to be a bunch of examples coming up. So let's say you go 10, 01, 2020. And then once again, 10, 02, 2020. And this is to date time, not just date. And let's say that you don't like the formatting on this and you want to change the formatting so that the day is first and then you have the month. You could just come in and type in format and put the day first. And now you can see that those switched. I'm going to do a couple more things here. What I want to do now is I want to create a three by three matrix and I'm going to use NumPy for that. There's NumPy. So I'm going to say random, random integer, and it's going to have values between 10 and 50. And I'm going to create a matrix by saying the size is going to be three by three. Then what I want to do is generate three consecutive dates. So I'm going to have date array is equal to PD date range. And I'm going to say 2020, 01, 01. And if I say periods three, that gives me three dates. And the frequency is going to be based on days. So I want three days. Then I'm going to create a data frame and I'm going to use my array up here that's going to have some random values generated for it. I'm going to define that I want columns generated that are going to be the letters A, B, and C. And I'm going to say that I want my index to be those dates. So I'm using the data array. And if I type in 
data frame, you can see that it generated those dates and then those random values with the columns labeled. Now I'm gonna be able to come in here and I'm gonna, and these are going to be different values for you, just to make sure you're aware of that, because they're randomly generated, but sometimes, you know, people forget. All right, I can also come in here and get the minimum. I'm gonna be able to get the maximum. I'm also going to be able to get the index by typing in argument max, let's say it says it's the second one, and argument minimum. All right, so there you go, rough overview of working with pandas date times. And now I wanna talk about time resampling using a real example. Okay, so I have a file that is going to contain stock market information price data on Apple. And I will include that also at GitHub. If you look in the description, you'll find that. All right, so it's a CSV file, comma separated values. And let's say I wanna come in here just to show you what it looks like. I wanna print this chart. And the X is going to be, that's funny, I typed in the wrong stock market symbol for Apple, but that's all right, who cares? <laughs> and I'm going to also put in the Y, where the Y data is coming from. And I'm gonna throw in some labels for this plot. So X is going to be the date, and Y is going to be the price. And you can see it printed out all that stock information for the Apple stock, all right? So pretty cool stuff. We're just getting started. I'm also going to be able to come in here and I'll be able to get values. Let's say I went from the first five values from our CSV file we downloaded. So what we have here is a date as well as the price information. And this is from 2014, if you're wondering. Let's come in and let's input this again. So again, Apple CSV, but this time I wanna set my index column to be equal to the date. So that's that. And I also want to treat that as a date. And how you do that is you type in parse dates equal to true. And then if I type in, you can see that now the dates are on the left side here. Now what I wanna do is I want to create some fictional volume data for the Apple stock. That just means the number of shares that traded hands in a day. So let's say I have 86 million shares to 256 million shares and I want to generate 240 of them because there's 240 rows in this to match up to the prices, otherwise it won't make sense. All right, so I got that. I can then add this fake volume data to my data frame. So DF Apple and volume is equal to array two. I'm also going to want to come in here and rename because the column names are AAPL underscore Y. I wanna rename that column to price because that's what it is. So just come in, type in rename, columns, and then you can list in all of the column names you wanna change. You wanna type in the name that it is currently, and then a colon and the name that you want it to be changed into. And if you want this to take effect with your data frame permanently, you type in place true. And let's see what it looks like with all our changes. And now you can see that I have Apple over here and I have my price and I have my volume and all these values are random and there's still 240 of them. All right, so now that I have this data set up and I can work with it, let's say that I would like to get the average price and volume over the year. Well, I can just say I, uh, Apple, resample, and then there's a whole bunch of rules that you can set, which are just ways of defining what, how you want to resample this information. So if I wanna resample it by year, I type in A, and I'm gonna show you the other ones here in a second. And let's say I wanna get the average or the mean. Well, there you go, and it gave me the average price for Apple in 2014 was $90. 
You're also going to be able to come in and type in the minimum. You're going to be able to type in the maximum price. And you could do a sum and a standard deviation. And standard deviation would be like that. All right, so that's the main things you're going to be using. If I would want to get the standard deviation just on the price, because that's what makes sense for the most part, I would just go Apple and I'm going to say price right like that and resample and I'm going to do it over the course of the day or the the year I mean that's what the A stands for again so the price fluctuated on average $13.31 over the course of the year you're also going to be able to get this information on a weekly monthly bi-weekly quarterly a whole bunch of different ways so let me just show you what that looks like so if I would want to resample and I want to get this on a weekly basis, and I'm going to use mean here, there you can see it gave me just the weekly information, which there's a lot of it. If I would want to come in and get the monthly information, put an M in there, and you can see just got the monthly mean average for price. Uh, let's say I want to do every other month, I type in SM. If I would want to do quarterly I type in Q and let's say that I would want to do bi-monthly and I also want to print out a bar chart for all the different changes in price every other month well I can just leave this be price resample rule in this case I'm going to say every two months I want the mean and I want to plot out this information and let's do a bar chart because that makes sense and also let's say I want to change the color each time one way to do that is to say color equal to list and then we would type in red green blue black yellow magenta cyan that's a quick way to get a whole bunch of different colors run it and there's your bar charts all right so kind of neat stuff and way more is coming in the future and now I want to talk about moving averages all right so what I want to do here is I want to print out information on changes in my Apple price and I'm going to plot this so I'm gonna say that I want this to be pretty big figure size is going to define how wide and tall your charts gonna be I'm going to set it for 12 and 6. Let's do it. There you go. So you can see it's a pretty big chart. Pretty nice. Now what I want to do here is use weekly data to create a rolling average. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go get this information. And you're going to use a method called rolling. And window is going to define how many days prior you want to base the average off of. I'm going to use seven days, just a whole week. And I'm going to say mean and price information is what I'm specifically looking for. And then plot. And you can see here what it did is the orange line is the moving average and the blue line is the actual stock price. You can see how it rises and falls. And this is very important for people that are investing and making predictions on the movements of the stock market. I could also come in and let's say I wanted to do like a monthly average. I could do 30. And you can see now it's a lot more smoothed out. And in some circumstances, this information could be more valuable than what I previously showed you. And as this tutorial series continues, I'll explain why all this stuff is important and how useful it is. Another thing you can do is we could show an average of everything that came before it because I don't know if you can see here but see there's no average here because we had to wait 30 days before we created that so I could come in and let's just get rid of this line right here I could say get my Apple information and price and here we're going to use expanding instead and what it's going to do is show the average of everything that as it, it it basically grows and grows and grows so it's going to go up and it's going to sort of flatten because the additional changes in price are not going to have that big of an effect over the long term all right and you're going to see that here in a second and let's say we want to plot this and again i'm going to say figure size 12 and run it 
and you can see that the average starts off here nice and smooth and then it grows and then it sort of just keeps going in the same general direction. Alrighty, so there you go, there's moving averages as well. And for the final part, I want to show you how to shift your time data. All right, so we have our Apple stock. And let's say that I want to come in and I want to shift this information down one row. Well, I could say DF Apple and then DF Apple shift one. And if I do this, this is going to make it permanent. So I'm going to not do that just so I can show you the changes. See, everything was shifted down one row. And if you want to shift everything up, put a negative in there, run it, and you'll see everything was shifted up one row. All right, so there you go. I think that's a pretty seriously good introduction to working with time series analysis. And as the tutorials continue, I will get into more and more complicated topics. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.